<clears throat> so I uh, suggest, uh, I, I'm not thinking about this um, in the terms of a talk. I'm not sure if I qua I'm qualified for giving you a talk in any way. I propose this more as a conversation. So I want to share my experience uh, after 10 years practicing system thinking into the business environment. In many ways, business from, from formal business to public administrations to NGOs, humanitarian work, uh, peace building, and many other aspects doing different bits uh, on them. So, and I want to share with you my experience just to learn from you more than you learn from me that I'm not sure if this is uh, in any way possible. But, uh, you know, get your feedback on on the things or the topic that I'm um, curious about and to uh, to how to improve my practice and how to serve better to, to business environment with uh, system thinking practice. So this is me. Miguel, I'm on LinkedIn and, and leading Systemico and Ideas Infinitas. Systemico with Hugh and Ideas Infinitas is a, a, a company in Spain. And first of all, this is a disclaimer for this talk. So all the views, insights, comments, or whatever you see and hear here is just my own experience and my personal practice. And it doesn't represent in any way the position of the system community. So yes, it has to be, you know, to be sure. And that's that's my question. That's the fundamental question that leads my interest right now. I see system thinking every time I talk about system thinking in the business environment, in the business community. Uh, this is the feedback I have. System thinking is some kind of blue thing that no one really know what really means. However, business management is very clear. So they have a lot of uh, tools, practices, processes, uh, indicators, economic economic indicators, financial, whatever. The, it is very clear. It, uh, um, when I talk about system thinking, system tools, approaches, or whatever, it's like, um, I don't know what you are talking about. So, And I think that's the challenge for, for me as uh, system thinking, and I, and I think for the community as well, how, to ca how we can bring this into more clarity to to be neat and um, for businesses or business manager or people uh, responsible for businesses to to think in the way in the same way we think about system thinking that can be very valuable for for them. This is a little bit my uh, process or, or how my interest and my practice has changed over the this ten first ten years of practice. I started from system dynamic, yeah, supply and simulation models and castle diagrams at the beginning of 2014. And I transit. So uh, as, as I learn, I transit into different uh, um, disciplines or tools or, or frameworks that I found useful. And I started here and I bumped into Ray Selakov that I, I was fascinated about him, about his ideas. And I started to use idealized design and many, many other concepts into to put this together to, to create some kind of business practice. Uh, I bumped into scenario planning and agent-based modeling that I found it fascinating and incredible difficult to apply. So, and I abandoned it uh, many years ago. Uh, Edward Deming, um total quality management that I'm still using a bit of it because I think it's, it's very good, very good concept of focusing on processes, and I found I found it very useful uh, working in in hard in businesses. Uh, for example, I'm doing a, a project right now in with you in, in Tenerife, and when we are measuring processes and and understanding processes, I think it's a very good way of of doing it. Uh, I bump into social network analysis, ISO model, and BSM uh, here in the uh, in SAIO and and BS, I found BSM fascinating as well and very practical and very useful in specific cases, restructuring and, and reorganization and and or how to structure um, how to structure the, the the organization in in some ways. So I'm using it bits and, and bytes, and I practice, uh, I, I develop an idea of how to use Castle Loop Diagram 
mixing with social network analysis that it was very useful in in peace building uh, the peace building project that I did a couple of years ago but over the years I understood that it, it is more about helping people to make sense of uh, of what they are facing and and in this makes sense I I ended up just to creating this strength bonds with people, so based on empathy and trust, uh, and using this deep listening and, and conversation in order for for facilitating them into structure and articulate their own knowledge. Um, I still using uh, maps or whatever the artifact that I found interesting for helping them and facilitating them to articulate their their thinking and I think I found their um a ground solid so a very good space for uh helping them to improve so I transit from the hard mathematical models to a more uh sense making space you know, that I found is is really is really good uh, I think is it, right now is a, a very good position for for keep moving forward and I think the difficulties I found. So stop me when you when you want. So it's just you know it's if you just raise your hands or I cannot read the chat, but just just shout and and I stop and and we and we chat. So and I think one of the difficulties that I found over the years uh, in in working with businesses is that we have different languages, and we have different ways of uh, dealing with uh, the complexity we face. No. And they their requirement for the business is uh, I something happened to me now I'm here so that's what pressure me, and we talk about or, or in my case my response is you know you have to focus in the long term or or yes you you need to tackle this now but the important thing is the long term so don't uh, sacrifice the opportunities in the long term and it is not here it's around it's the system, and I found that that's not always resonate uh, to them. They focus on results, so I have to get something from this, and I have to to get it quickly. And we talk about so I talk about improvement, resilience, and adaptation. So how to improve your system, your business for producing these results, but you need to do things differently. They they ask for action because it's what they what makes them feeling that they are doing something for their business. And I talk about, oh, you need to understand, you need to create the service, you need to identify the leverage point, coordinate around the system and all these kind of uh, messages. And they ask simple tools. And, and I talk about, no, it's a matter of perspective. You, see, you, you have model, you have framework, theories, laws, perception, approaches. Uh, and I think my, my feeling over the years, I tried to narrow in into accommodate my language into their needs. And how to create these bridges to mine to, to, to just to close to close the gap between something that is I think is completely complementary and one is the 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 base or, or the ground for the other to happen, but the problem is the the gap is still there and we and I have the feeling that we are not able yet to find the path or find the bridges or, or the ropes to to pull them together. Miguel, I, I'd like to. Uh, add something to this because this, this list resonates with me and um, recently I, I got a uh, somebody told me of a distinction which I think fits this very well um, that business people are fo they have to cope with the situation so that's on the left and and um, the understanding which is on the right we I think also as systems thinkers but thinkers in general i think i think uh are focusing on knowledge we we still use the framework that knowledge is power it it isn't anymore so the complexity uh forces us to to go towards um towards the left as well so to help these business people with coping so i think that's that's a that's a nice addition to this list that you here present so just want to say that so uh yeah and you mentioned something interesting, and uh, and I remember I was walking one day on the street, and I have conversation on the phone with Patrick, and uh, and he said, 
uh, VSM is about the flow of information and system dynamics is about the flow of things. And uh, and I don't know why why I still remember this, but it makes uh, uh, just a hint in my in my brain. And I think it's related with this, as, as you mentioned, we are focused on complexity, but from the information point of view, that, that I think is, is right. But they are not only focused on information. They have to move things from one thing to one, from one place to another place. They have to move money from one account to another account, and and this creates a different kind of pressure. That I'm not sure if we are uh, we are dealing uh, well with this. We stay in the in the knowledge sphere, and it's difficult to go into. At least for me, it's difficult to go practically into moving things, moving boxes from one room to another. So, Patrick. Well, can you hear me? Um, yes, yes, David. And just following up from Ed's point, because I've been on a similar journey to you over many years, and I think it's a move away, I think, from the sort of the, the rational intellectual thing view of system thinking to a more interpersonal relationship view of system thinking, which I think is fundamental to what you said and what Ava has just said, that you have to focus on the relationship you have with your clients and, and with yourself also, which is where Ava's perceptual theory is very useful. And I think it's a general trend. I think it's a general trend from my conversations I've had with people to embody yourself as a system thinker. So you, you you become a system person, which means certain ways of talking. Ava talked about that. You have to have certain ways of talking to people and being aware of your own presence. You embody that in the way you are as a person, which I think is what you're doing in your the end of your journey. So I totally applaud what you're saying, and I agree with it, your, your understanding precisely. Thank you very much. Well, oh, thank you, thank you, David. I, I think it's, I, I completely agree with you. It is it is fascinating the impact you have on on people, and 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 now I'm I'm working with um with the CEO of a of a business that has different businesses around, and it's more than my knowledge, more than the tools, more than everything is uh, us having a meal together, and he talking to me about their own things and, and just giving him feedback, giving as a mirror. So, and I'm not coach, I'm not a uh, psychologist, it's, I'm just a, a a normal consultant. But being aware that some of the cases that they only need to be listened to, verbalize their their problems, articulate their, their uh, concerns. And you are there just for, in the best of your practice and your knowledge, just to re interact with with them, and I found that in this case, in many cases, when I work with the senior directors or CEOs or senior managers, uh, they they have the, the the knowledge. They they know what to do, but the, the only thing that needs is a little bit of order. And this order, sometimes or most of the time, they get this order just by exposing just verbalizing what is happening and you just helping them to put things uh, on a paper and uh, uh and you have to have the practice you have to have the knowledge you you have to have your 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 way of facilitating this process but at the end it's just this conversation i simplify this into a conversation space you yeah. patrick yeah that Thanks, Miguel. I mean, I think it's really interesting. I think the connection to Eva's talks um, quite striking, isn't it? Um, so <laughs> you've got two kind of, two kind of reference points here, and you're trying to pull them into yours, and they're trying to pull you into theirs. Um, I mean, my I'd be interested in how 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 your experience compares with mine, because for me, there's always on the there's always with clients an anxiety that they are trying to resolve and it manifests in particular in, in the sort of stuff that you've talked about on the left hand side that's how they express it but the anxiety is more is usually deeper than that um so that's just that's just the 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 way they have exp of expressing that anxiety but the anxiety is usually much more existential um and i think from a practice point of view 
my experience is you've got to address the thing that they say is the problem and then give them something else that's on your side uh, of that. Um, so you're giving them, you're giving them, you're using their frame of reference to open up a new frame of reference for them that they can then move to. Um, and I think that's, I'm not sure that's that that's quite a le an evil levels thing, but it, but it's it's definitely that you know it's definitely access to the two reference points. Yeah. Don't know if that if that uh, sort of resonates with with your practice at all. Yeah, and and one of the things that you mentioned is this is the way they express their the the problems, but they have a deeper anxiety, and I, and I think every time I I, I engage in a in a project is for me. It's like different dimensions running at the same time. I used to be a musician many years ago. And when you record a song, you have 30, 40 different tracks going going on at the same time. Sometimes you listen one more than others and, and vice versa. And I found that dealing with these uh, senior managers, dealing with big problems is the same. It's 30, 30 tracks running at the same time. And if you stick with just the more superficial one, is the now and here results and action, you can deal with the three, uh, the three superficial one. But your ability to go deeper and to create different frames of reference, as you, as you put it, and connect them, and, and understand that if you do something here, you will have an impact in the others one, and, and it can improve the situation, without forgetting that. This is the, the the track that makes really noise, and you have to solve it or you have to mute it. I think that's that's the art, uh, and and that's the magic, think, isn't it? Yeah, and and I think we are very well positioned. We have all the resources around us. We have all the knowledge. Eva yeah. put us this theory of control. We have everything. Yeah, but I think we need to create the 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 reference framework for us to interact properly with this kind of complexity different dimension because if not it just has i have the feeling that it is us talking about our knowledge base in on one side but pointing then as oh you don't have this reference knowledge and you are not as good as, as we or don't manage the complexity as good as we are able to do it but the interesting thing is create this framework of reference from their perspective, for us to adapt to what they need. Could I just add something to that? Uh, because I liked what Patrick said, uh, but I think the, the two ideas are linked in that it's being able to respond to the now here results action at the same time as putting in place the uh, some underlying uh, blocks or changes that starts to build trust but then opens a space for you to go deeper with the transformation that might be needed and using the responding to the immediate requirements helps to open up the opportunity for more profound uh, change to occur both for individuals and organizations. Well, certainly that's been my experience. Hmm. And, and I think you mentioned, Hugh, something important, very important, that is trust. And 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 I think that that's the way. So they, they have to, and later on in the presentation, I, I mentioned this, they have to be sure that you can help them with the immediate needs in order for you to be, for them to give you access to uh, deeper layers or deeper tracks uh, and it's just by creating trust. Eva, you have your hand raised? Eva, you have your I'm hand raised. Oh, sorry, just, uh, I, I didn't hear my name. Uh, I'd love to uh, uh, chime in on, on, on this self-limitation slide that you're using because it's but it feels like a conflict that, uh, in one way, but it, this is actually also different ways of controlling. So on the left side, you see this this kind of programmatic control where you need results and you need uh, you have everything in, in, in hands, right? This is the management kind of control. And on the other hand, you have this kind of 
principles um, complex control in which everything is connected to everything else and we're looking at relationships. So these are also levels in our perceptual control theory, the different ways of controlling. Uh, and I think this, this is also one uh, very uniting idea because this is a kind of problem also my clients in therapy run into because they, they want to solve a problem by doing stuff and I need to sit with them and like feel all the kinds of errors that they have and uh, stop running and try to solve uh, solve stuff by yeah. doing stuff but like solve more into a way of being and into a, a way of looking at themselves that's that's different so this is all it's, it's more of a matter of consciousness than uh, a matter of doing stuff differently how, how what do you think about that interesting because i think people change if they do things and and to do things differently or, or to do the right things they have to be conscious mm -hmm. and i think this is a connection is when you mentioned before that the conflict is on that, at that level and if there is a conflict that cannot be resolved if we're stuck there we have to uh, go up in the yeah. level of consciousness no or yeah. or, uh, or change the goals yeah. but so, at so the it, end yeah sorry no no go for it go for it <laughs> Uh, so, so your your part of your your side in this conflict is is at a higher level because you're looking up and seeing why you're doing all this stuff and it, and, and it's not working and you're you're conflicting. But the parties involved they are not on the level where you are, right? That's the the main problem you have. So, precisely that's precisely the the, the situation. So yeah. I think we we are in a so a system. So we need thinker. more connections then. I think that's that's what I'm what I'm proposing here. Yeah. So we're using using your your model where the conflict is here, but people is living here, not not uh, agreeing with the situation of feeling uncomfortable in this yeah. way of living. The conflict is here, and in the upper uh, layer is the the different goals or different or different level of consciousness. Let me yeah. put it in this way. So as system thinker, I, I, I feel very easy to understand the situation holistically and, and 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 understand that you need to change the level of consciousness till if you change the from gear to gear the conflict will be mm. dissolved even yeah. following Rachel Aikoff mm. and and Patrick put it in a very good way before is business want to resolve and as a system thinker was to dissolve and this there is a difference between resolving and dissolving problems so but the problem for me is business uh, leaders or business people are uncomfortable because they are in conflict and mm. for being able to lead them to connect them with a different level of consciousness mm. we have to guide them into do things differently because they won't change their mind just by reading a book or even reading a book is doing something but it's how we connect how we demonstrate practically that this level of consciousness it, you can get this level of consciousness doing things in your day-to-day -day mm. basics. And I think that's, at least for me, is the challenge is, okay, that's that's very clever, but how I do something that resolves my conflict or I can move away from this conflict and walk towards this new level of consciousness. Mm. And how we link this, how we create the path from our uh, better position to understand the, the situation as a whole how we lead them into do things to to walk towards this direction yeah if you were a, a colleague therapist i'd advise you to uh stop stop doing so much yourselves and, and allowing the other party to to move and, and and to connect so give them more control in the process so they they, they have a bit more space not solving it by trying harder harder yourself i take uh, note of this uh, <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> okay so let's uh keep walking so uh reflecting about the 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 war with the so because one one of the recurrent question i have with colleagues or uh, discussion with colleagues is how we sell system thinking approaches so because we know that is is really good for businesses, but it's very difficult to to sell this to actually to uh, make a living as uh, a decent living as an assistant consultant. And I think there are, there is a space between oh, my, 
after the years, I found that the only way to sell system thinking, system thinking consultancy, is when the, when when these three elements are present. So for in one side is the need. So when a business has a real need and and has the pressure or the urgency, they are open, start to be open to listen to. Uh, different proposals, but they have to have some kind of a so, uh, certain degree of autonomy. They they have to have power, they have to have money, they have to have anything around them to, to be able to make a decision in your favor. And, and they have to have some kind of consciousness or understanding of what this system thinking is. Not necessarily previously, but we have to explain it in such a way that it is understandable for them. And every time I found myself in this situation, when there is a clear need, the person I'm talking to has autonomy to, to make a decision. And I was able to explain how system was valuable. I was able to get a, a job. So if any of this is not present, so for example, here, not sure if you see the, the mouse, when they have a need and they have autonomy, but they, uh, we are not able to transmit the value of system approaches, they just hire Deloitte or Accenture or any of the consultancy, so the normal uh, consultancy. If they have autonomy and they understand system thinking, but they don't have the need, most of the time I sold training. Okay, I want to train my my team because I think this is valuable. Maybe in the future uh, will be valuable for us. But let's train them. When there is a need and there is an understanding of system thinking, but no autonomy at all, I they usually become uh, oh, it's a space for advocacy. They they talk in the organization. They join the group uh, system thinking groups and they try to penetrate the or, or distribute the ideas, system ideas into their organization. But the only way I found to effectively sell uh, sell uh, consult system consultancy is when I able to explain and introduce and create this connection, this conceptual connection between the practice and or the system ideas and how or, or how system ideas can help them. And there is a strong need and there is a um, good autonomy for doing that. So if not, I. Yeah, I have to find a way of of creating this space. And the the okay. can, Michael, can I just ask you quickly, if you don't mind? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I was enjoying the look of that diagram and and thinking about it in an in an enabling way. Have you ever been in a situation where you've actually, situation where you've actually used that with a client or just the theory of it? So the diagram I yes. uh, did it yesterday. So uh, I didn't I didn't have the chance. So I was conceptualizing this and I did it yesterday. And I said, okay, maybe uh maybe this this is nice. But I uh, but the concept I I you should I, I did it many, many times because I discovered a few years ago what the power of a feedback loop. Mm -hmm. No no more more than one oh one feedback loop is powerful, but if you combine three, you can explain everything. And I will show you later on. And I found that when you are able to bring order into the conversation just with uh, simplifying the concept in such a way that they immediately get it, you create this space. You create the, the internal space of system approaches. But the other thing that I found is that sometimes all the effort we, we do to promote system thinking in this space are competing with other approaches. Not some of them are are taking system uh, system principles and ideas, or, or others come from other different uh, design thinking, or, or even design, or or whatever. That everything is completely fine, but they are more um, they are better than us selling their 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 services. And I think coming from the design, I have the experience. Uh, few years ago with a, a woman she was incredible clever working working for um uh for a design consultancy incredibly clever and and she put it she talked about system ideas mixing with design and the presentation was so 
outstanding and she was so clever that it, it's like doesn't matter what I do you will explain this better than me and you will get clients much better than me so I, and it's a matter of I think this diagram I think the profound meaning of this diagram is the, the need and the autonomy we cannot control anything of this so we only can identify where clients are in this situation but the system understanding depends on ourselves and and how we use or approach or collaborate with other competitive alternatives is is on us as well so how can we in the part we have control how can we improve in such a way that when we identify this this space where there, there is a need and there is there is autonomy we can explain it better and to penetrate uh, the, or our ideas to penetrate better yeah patrick david um can, can i just quick, quickly uh, raise this yep. interesting question of autonomy and control perhaps bringing in eva on this because autonomy as you probably know is a key concept in the viable system model you know, you want to create a situation in which people have more autonomy. And as Stafford Beer has often said in his reports, the key problem is often control is badly exercised. People have too much control at the top of the organisation and don't realise they don't need all that control. So in some sense, you want to get rid of unnecessary control and give the control to people at the, at the, at the coalface, as it were. So... That doesn't often happen because you often get misuse of power in organizations, in my experience. I've had various situations where power is misused by people who don't want to let it go. And I'm sure, Patrick, you've had a similar experience. So how do you deal with this question of power and autonomy? And how do you try and break break out of that, that lock, that point in, in your dealing with people? Is that an issue for you, Miguel? Yes, but it's a, a time issue. It is so from this perspective, it's a, a matter of time. So because what you are describing, to be able to tackle so, some of this, I have to be in the organization. I have to be working with the organization. But I cannot tackle this unless I'm uh, I have this initial conversation and identify uh, who has control in order to create the space for for selling the service, just yes, so to say. And, and 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 I'm currently in a situation where uh, I'm working with a company that has a level of hierarchy and control and autonomy. Uh, so they have level of hierarchy that supposedly, allegedly, has some autonomy and control, but in reality they are not. The the managers don't have enough autonomy for creating this space. So. Okay. And, and and now we are working using BSM to how to create the structure to redistribute power and, and create these spaces for autonomy. But you have to be there. You you have to be. You have to. Uh, you have to gain the trust and 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 establish the connection between the theory and the practice, in order for you to start working towards creating the new, this new space. But this this I think this visual applied to the initial stage so when you are trying to get into an organization because you think you really think that you can be very valuable for them and you have to deal with the power in in the way it is set up so if you make a wrong decision in the person you are approaching for because they have the need but it's the wrong person because it doesn't have the autonomy there is not this space is not open for you so this is why I think it's a matter of timing. Okay, thank you. Patrick? You yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that the this diagram says to me, in a way, Miguel, is, is at a community level, um, the more we can do in your training and advocacy intersects, the more that moves the system's understanding bubble across the board. Um, which, which in theory makes the 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 bit in the middle, which is what you're interested in, um, bigger. So I think I think at a kind of community level, that's that's sort of where we're focused is is in building up those two 
those two quadrants um and that that should make life easier for everybody uh, but that's that's a community effort this is one of the strategies i completely agree but the other strategy is how to how to improve the understanding of or, or the way we explain yeah. the system that is cheaper and is faster because you, you don't rely on hours of training or the effectiveness of the advocacy. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, I think that the good thing or, or the reflection for me is what are the strategies in our power in our control to if this if this makes sense first of all, how we improve our uh, practice and our narrative in order for simplify the this conversation. Tony? Thanks, Miguel. Um, I think this is really interesting. And I, I wanted to come back to a couple of things that are sort of interwoven with this. One of them is the is the the idea of different reference points. And the other one is the idea of knowledge. Um, and to some extent, I could argue that the reference points that we are presented with when we walk into lots of organizations um, are totally, you know, I suppose, imposed by the knowledge that those people have. And in many cases, I would regard the sort of um, education that people in business have as indoctrination. They start out as children thinking systemically, which is very commonly regarded. And our education system drives it out of them. So that by the time they come out of university with their degree and their MBA or whatever they've got to get in the business, their their systemic thinking has actually been eradicated and replaced by linear sort of, I suppose, formulaic thinking around how things work. And I think this is one of the big issues that we've still got to address because there is a meta issue here about education from childhood right the way through to management. As an example of this, I would throw in an exercise that Steve Brewis and I did years and years ago with Cambridge Business School where we actually used VSM with them. Um, and the people who we were doing the work with and the organization who was on the receipt of the project were kind of going, oh, this is fantastic. You know, we, we, it's a new way of thinking about this. We, we, never, we were never able to actually figure out how this worked before until you brought this method into, into play. The poor students who did all this great work and were recognized by the organization, then criticized by the university for not using an established method. Mm -hmm which just shows how toxic our educational system has become to thinking systemically. And I think there is, there, there's this, there is this meta issue that's still that, that always there with me, that the reception in specific situation is dependent on the reference points that we bring and they bring. But actually part of the issue is that their reference point is, is so indoctrinated by the education system which has driven this out of the so it's an issue that we have to think about how we're going to address, but it is a real one and it's going to affect us forever unless we go and, and tackle some of the, the meta issue as well. Just a thought. Uh, absolutely. And, and this is not only happening in the in the education system that is a, a, has its purpose, has a, a, its own purpose and structure and, and is just for keeping keeping the elites into their positions and by keeping the, the, the curriculum. It's happening in organization. An organization has different, more flexibility because they have different cultures. They they uh, name it. And one of the things that uh, we were aware a few years ago, working at, is similar example to the VSM working with the with the students. But when we go to an organization to work with teams because I don't know to improve the productivity and to solve a department problem. We introduce the framework, simple, simple tools, systemic tools, just to be aware of uh, a little bit of mapping, a little bit of reflection on the leverage point where the problem comes from and how can we tackle this holistically. This, this very simple framework, accessible for everyone. But what happened is that when we left the organization, we finished the work and we left the organization, people was very excited about this new way of thinking. But suddenly it became frustration. And it became frustration because you left them with a new frame of reference. 
but in an old system that they cannot execute. And it's the same, I think it's the same problem that you were mentioning with the students. So they they measure, the university measure them by the standards and, and you introduce a new paradigm. And and I think that's that's the problem. The pro, uh, one of the problems, at least in in my practice, that is every time you intervene there, if you don't, if you cannot transform or or open the space for them to start performing in a different way, you just left them with new ideas, very shiny, very very amazing ideas, but in a cage, they are bumping uh, their heads against the bar because they cannot apply these new ideas and they feel even more frustration than before is it is how we so I, I think we have a responsibility there so uh, at least to be to be aware and and, and introduce this uh, not not only the tools or the ideas but as well the possible outcomes of of the work in order for everyone to manage the situation and the expectations and and, and the transformation process in, in, in a specific way. But uh, I fundamentally agree with this, Tony. I think is we, but I think this is a claim to how can we improve us as a society in all the aspects of our learning <clears throat> and our professional uh, work. And should be, we should be doing something. I don't, I don't have a clue what, but we should. Okay, let's uh, be aware of time, a couple of minutes. Just, uh, I will share the presentation later on. There are uh, uh, a few things, but it's just a, a couple of concepts uh, to talk about. Uh, uh, when I, when I, in this initial stage of, uh, this initial relationship with companies or with organizations where they don't know anything about systems thinking, but they have the needs and they have the autonomy, Something that worked to me, as I mentioned before, is this: is just explain, try to in this initial conversation that are complex because are are messy and you don't know what is important, what is not important. What I start practicing is just simplify, try to simplify, create some kind of reference for the problem. So because usually all the information is there, but just in a chaotic way, and I use this this template is there is a symptom here so you perceive something you are doing something in the short term sometimes reduce the symptom or increase the symptom but the symptoms are something that that uh, give us a clue of the fundamental problems that usually is accessible in in this initial conversation that justify the the symptoms but whatever you are doing is creating a, a different problem that you have to deal with at the same time, and is uh, worsening the fundamental problem. And it's sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's more difficult. But I found that in any conversation, when I just pen a paper, when I'm able to describe the messy situation uh, in this very clear way, knowing that this is uh, uh, this is an oversimplification and it's just for the matter of this conversation. Uh, I found that they, they it worked. They found this very insightful. And I'm reflecting about why I found this for uh, factors. First of all, you are bringing order and clarity. You are structuring the problem uh, on the go and, and knowing that this is only a, a conversation, but they start, they start perceiving the situation. As, oh, there is some kind of order here that I'm not able to. I wasn't able to see before, but this guy is is able to structure it. You give them a, a deeper understanding. Oh, these are the reason. Oh, this is the way the symptoms are connected with a fundamental problem that I know I have, but I didn't realize that was connected with this kind of symptoms. You bring insights or new connection relationships or or the consequences of your actions and how the consequences of your actions is increasing or decreasing the the problem and you provide with alternatives that is that this is the diagnosis effect when you go to the gp and you, you are scared because something happened to you and you don't have a clue what's happened once you are diagnosed you have alternatives you can change your diet your lifestyle you can take this drug or, or whatever but this alternative weren't before in the conversation or in the problem because you weren't aware of how the problem was connected. And 
and I think this is, uh, for me, this is an example, and it's a technique that I'm using every single day. For me, yes, it's automat automatized because it's a natural thing for me. But when I practice this, when I try to structure a little bit uh, a conversation, I, I repeatedly found that these four elements are, are present. And when I ask uh, the clients, is, is this conversation uh, useful for you? In some way, all these four elements are present. So, and, and 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 I think this is related with what I mentioned before between the requirement, business requirements, and what I was delivering in my narrative. And this is creating some kind of bridges up a temporal portal, a little sci sci-fi temporal portal or, or wormhole that connect the business world with the system world. And sometimes it's momentary, sometimes it lasts longer. But I've, I found it uh, crucial in selling system thinking. And this is something just yeah, for reflection, just yes, when you get the, just to explain this framework and if you want to have a look later. The, I categorize the, the type of projects in, in this can, this is called kind of model that is about, is for um, when you deliver something a product or a service and how satisfied clients are depending on the implementation of the solution or the or, or the new feature in in uh, in your service or in your product and this one the the yellow one are just basic needs so these are the features that has to have there in order for uh, it's not increasing the satisfaction if they are not present they are annoying but if they are present it's just a must have this is a must have the the green light is performer the more you implement system thinking approaches the better so they they value this uh, one dimensional feature so you help them with increasing revenue because you restructure the department or restructure the service the more you apply this the more satisfied they are these are excitement so you increase a little bit you introduce or implement a new feature or system thinking feature system thinking idea and the excitement uh, grows exponentially. And this one is uh, reverse. So the more you implement system thinking in the organization, in the project, or in, in whatever the place, the more dissatisfied they are. So, and I categorize, could categorize different projects in, in this um, paradigm, so these uh, groups projects where uh, are vision driven and you can implement full scale system thinking ideas theory frameworks and, and everything and they are super satisfied because you help them to transform the organizations there are others that they are looking for uh, uh, differentiation in their businesses so you help them with just something specific that they are they they exploit it and exploit it and exploit it and build up on top of these uh, ideas I usually, in, in a period of time, work with experts, and doesn't matter what you what you put on the table; they know but knows better. And it's very frustrating because uh, it is yeah okay you know this and you know you know everything, but you are not practicing this. So there, there is some gap I can help with, but usually I found it that is uh, they are annoying and they are bored of uh, the consultant and they just give everything for granted. There are other ways that I uh, work in project that the more you implement uh, system ideas, the, the worse it gets, because usually there is a hidden agenda or prepacked solution that they, they are looking for or they are pushing for, and you are just disturbing, creating this disturbance. Or there in the, in the civil, uh, uh, with civil servants or public uh, businesses where are, there's a high bureaucracy with a high need, uh, but they understand very clearly the system ideas, and, and but they don't have any autonomy. So if you help them to uh, structure a little bit the service or just to uh, incremental improvement, it is really, really appreciated and it's very, very good for them. And there are other, uh, this is mainly in the third sector on humanitarian work where they usually are ill-structured. Some of them are not even well institution, institutionalized. 
So, and there, when you give them a framework, something that helps them to structure and to think about their programs or their advocacy work a little bit more effectively, there is the, the satisfaction is, is huge. So and for me, this is a, is a, a matter of thinking what are the possibilities? So if we, so what kind of tools, what kind of work we can do in with system or how we have to structure our system thinking work, depending on the autonomy, the 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 type of needs, the autonomy or, or the system understanding they can develop, no? or we can transmit to them. Um, and finally, for me, there are. <clears throat> four main challenge, challenges for the adoption of system thinking. We're thinking from the point of view of the clients. The first of all is the loss, uh, the loss of focus. So because it's a paradigm shift, they are they work in a specific way and we introduce new ideas, new concepts, new way, ways of doing. And it's sometimes it's difficult to to understand or to uh, or to to understand how they really can apply this into their reality. So and, and I think it's something that I develop ways of helping them to understand. The other is the lack of agency and control it, because there is a knowledge gap. If we introduce BSM or we introduce uh, system dynamics or whatever other discipline, they don't know anything about it. So one of my clients asked me for literature to read and to, to understand a little bit better or deeper the ideas I was proposing to him. The other is the lack of trust on delivery. Okay, you are talking about holistic thing. You are talking about the system as a whole, but uh, you are not telling me what is the process, what the process looks like. You are asking me build this process on the go. So I'm not sure if you will be able to deliver. And the other is the the unclear impact on an attribution. If you are, if we develop this this thing together and we build this with the teams and with all this uh, system knowledge, how do I know that I can replicate this, that the, the change, the real impact comes from what we did in this department and not come from the other department or all the things that are that we didn't change. And I think sometimes we don't we don't have a clear answer for this. And my final thought is I was this morning uh, just fa finalizing the presentation and I, and I had here different points, but I changed this for for this metaphor. And I see uh, myself or us as a system thinker, as, as chef in a, a three Michelin star restaurant. And I think uh, I think for me, the comparison is you have to craft, you, ha you have to master your craft. You, you, you have to know your thing you have to be be ready and we very well prepared for using whatever the tool but you need to understand the living nature of the ingredients so you need to understand how people behave how people work so the, the, all these kind of things about the reference uh, structures and the limitation and the constraints and the, the structure processes etc cetera, etc cetera. but you, you have to be very skillful with your tools uh, but working under pressure. So your tools has to be hasn't has to be an or, or don't have to be an impediment for anything. Has to work smoothly and doesn't and has to be pressure resistant. So if they are under pressure because it's a financial pressure, your war, your tool has to work well there. At least you have to work well with them in whatever the situation. And all these things you have to do in while you are working on budget and and keeping everything order and clean so no mess around no chaos no dirty or dodgy things no you have to be just you, you have to perform in front of all the people so you have to be clean and, and tidy and you have to deliver outstanding results to exceed clients expectation and if there is a component of uh, personal development or or just realization or or something that help them to start a new path of transformation, you are creating the illusion of magic to ensure that the client return and you keep your three-star Michelins and you can overprice your services and whatever you want to do with it. And that's all, folks.
So thank you very much. If you find this uh, in some way interesting, I'm super happy. Thanks, Miguel. Great talk, mate. Um, questions? We've got a couple of minutes, so we can we can field a couple of questions. I, I would think. Um, thanks, Miguel. Um, I like I always like the ones that are sort of like, um, hurt from personal experience and sort of storyized, if you like it in a way. Um, the bit at the end, uh, the the chef analogy. There's obviously various analogies that you use and stuff, and I like that. And I'm reminded of one of the OU books. The um uh the intro talks about the fusion of kind of art and science and i think you've touched on that very nicely with the chef with the chef stuff there of like the science of how food works and then the, the art of how you uh do that and how you um and, and and how you you present that or or the innovation in combining new ingredients um i'm reminded of i think it's basil ice cream which is uh obviously sounds very strange and, and so on and so forth but apparently it's delicious and um however yeah so um yeah i really liked it and just to say thanks thank you very much gabby thank you any other questions your um your sort of metaphor of the chef miguel is really interesting i've, I've never thought of any of that but having seen it it's made me realize there's a whole bunch of other little metaphors that make sense for us to think about. So in chefing, you know, this idea of mise en place, that you kind of line up everything, you know, you know what your ingredients are, you've got it all prepped, you've got it all in one place, and you you know what how you're going to actually construct the dish. But then obviously you have to adapt a little bit to what's happening when it's in the pan or in the oven or whatever. And that seems to be an interesting metaphor for us as well. So if you take the chef metaphor, you can take some of the ideas from chefing, like mise en place and the preparation of things, but then also the adaptation to the nature of the ingredients when they're in the pan. And I think, so we could use a lot of those metaphors because I think people kind of get them and they're not mystical in the way that systems thinking can sometimes appear. So I'm... I, I, I love this idea. I think there's a whole bunch of storytelling that you could build on the back of this that actually would help us communicate better what we do. I think, I think, think maybe just, just to echo, sorry, Miguel, go, you go, mate. Just a, a brief, a brief comment on this. I think, Tony, that's, that's precisely, a, oh, for me, it's an example of creating this bridge between system and business. It is how how we put together doesn't matter what it is that communicate the value of system thinking into the business environment and this is a silly uh, metaphor but enable us to think about to build on top of this metaphor with adaptation with all the concepts that are very important for us how can we bring this idea of and and and, and, and benjamin did a, a, a talk in sayo about metaphor so how we use this to enable people to understand systems in a better way, in a, in a more simple way to bridge the business and system thinking together. I, I, I mean, I know I'm biased on this, Miguel, because um, I, I come from a craft background, but the whole idea of craft, I think, is is really important. And it it's brought out to me when um, I, I, I see comments in other systems groups that shall remain nameless which basically go um has anybody well, i mean i mean the, the message is really are nobody actually practices um you know to, to actually practice in any in any safe way and get results in, in the world which and if we're not doing that what are we you know what are we playing at you have to be able you, you have to have some mastery of the craft um so i think i think that's essential it, I don't think that solves our communication problem, or you know, it, it it kind of does to an extent, but I don't think it's it's the total answer to the that bridging the gap thing that you talked about early in the in the talk. Um, but it it, it certainly helps. As a counterpoint, surely if we are in the business of helping people, then 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 part of the craft is in helping them to see that. So it's an aspect of our yeah. craft that we can get better at, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Simon. Simon? 
Oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Miguel. I thought that was really good. A couple of things that I got out of it. I loved your Venn diagram. <clears throat> and I think that will help us explain, you know, and, and, and form entry points into engagement at, at the right level, given the right environment. I really liked that. I thought that was great. Also explaining why some things that, they're that, that, that a client might currently be doing, where they fit on that relative to us. You know, what are we going to bring that's different and why is it different? It helps to explain that. And anything that we can do to help to explain it is great. And with that in mind, I, I, I love your metaphor, too, about about trepping. And I made a joke in there that I take the Gordon Ramsay approach. Right. But, you know, swear at them and tell them they're wrong. Um, <laughs> but but um, uh, oh well, it's worked for me so far. Um, and um, but, the, but my point is that this, you know, we are transdisciplinary, right? So drawing metaphors from a lot of different disciplines, I think is completely appropriate about how we go to market. <laughs> you know? yeah. If it's about chefing, brilliant. If it's about crafting, brilliant. Whatever it is that works for us that we can that we can bring to the table, I think and thinking about it from a very, you know, a very broad perspective is, is going to be extraordinarily useful for us. So thanks very much indeed. I, it was great to see your experience. And 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 I love the fact that you 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 could graphically place your prior engagements and uh, uh, mm. And interventions uh, on on on, so, on some fairly simple curves. I thought that was really brilliant, very elegant. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you very much.